the rich symbolism of what happens tonight in the liturgy, uh, it's often it's often glossed over. We're kind of we're aware of the fact that there's normally a bit of foot washing here, and you see it in, done in different parishes in in, in kind of how would you say varying degrees of, of solemnity. Uh, the profundity of the action was went over the heads of a lot of the, the apostles uh, the first time it happened as well to understand exactly what was going on. I mean, Jesus had to kind of Jesus had to spell it out, and and Peter wasn't getting the message really either. Uh, so it's 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 interesting just to to look at this like that that the apostles themselves didn't quite know what Jesus was doing. This action isn't normal, right? It's not the way things ordinarily would be, where Jesus, I mean, as he says himself, you call me master and Lord and rightly, so I am. But if I, the Lord and master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I mean, he, he, he spells it out. He spells it out. We're called to serve. Each one of us is called to serve. And if we don't, get, if we don't understand our, our various roles, whatever they may be, even, even a role of leadership, a role of responsibility, is still a role of service. Um, like I was, remember talking to Father Paul. Father Paul, the founder of my community, he is Austrian, and he grew up very near Innsbruck on the side of a ski slope. So he was skiing from the age of about a week and a half. Uh, so he's a really, really good skier. So he can ski downhill backwards and then do a flip. I, I, I witnessed it with my own eyes. Uh, I tried. It ended very differently when I did it. Um, so he's really, and actually he, he became a ski instructor for the ski instructors. So he was like the Navy SEAL of the, of the ski instructors. Like he, he would show ski instructors how, how to teach. So only a really, really good skier. Um, so it was all set up, right? The, the community, we had kind of decided to give him a weekend off to go skiing, right? So, we, we, you know, it was kind of an, it was informally, formally communicated to all the various community members, don't contact Father Paul, right? Give him this weekend, we have a, we're gonna send him off to Innsbruck, to his near, close enough to his home city, and uh, let him go skiing for the weekend. And you could actually see his excitement grow because I mean, he, he does love it and he, ha he, hasn't ha he hasn't had a chance in years and so <laughs> lo and behold anyway like the day before the day before uh, uh, he's due to go he gets some call from somewhere saying that there's a mission station in great need of his presence and, and like I, I was there I was there at the time and I just saw he smiled and said well I'm here to serve you know, and that's, 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 that's it, like that's, that serves. Even in a position of leadership, you're there to serve. And he said, I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get time to ski, or I don't get time off as such, because I have to serve the community. I have to serve. And it's, it's a beautiful way to see, you know, responsibility and fatherhood, and uh, to see how all of us are called to serve, and Jesus himself leads by example. Jesus leads by example. So he sets the pace of self-giving love. And it's something that we've come across as well in the, you know, various little studies here. Uh, when we look at, we, we try to do a little study with the, with the guys and with the girls about masculinity and femininity. And, and one of the things that, that always comes up, whenever you come across like a, a good talk about masculinity, they can't do so. Well, you, won't, you won't find a good one anyway that doesn't delve into the theme of self-sacrifice that in order to be a good man, and therefore a good father, and therefore possibly a good priest, you have to be willing to sacrifice yourself. And the opposite to that, like the, the definition of, of emasculation from St. Thomas Aquinas, is a man is emasculated, so demasculated, becomes less of a man, when he's unwilling to renounce pleasure in favor of an arduous task. So he's unwilling to renounce pleasure in favor of hard work in favor of what needs to be done, in favor of his responsibility. And so you see how Jesus on the cross, right, renounces, if you will, the cushy life, the cushy humanity that he could have had on earth. Remember, he knows what's going to happen, so he'd also know how to avoid the cross. He'd know how to avoid suffering. He'd know how to avoid people who, who have bad intentions. He'd know how to, but he chooses not to. He chooses to take on this arduous task to renounce the cushy number, the comfortable life, and take on this arduous task of dying for love of us. So then he becomes the true man, 
ecce uomo. Behold the man. Behold the, 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 the epitome, the definition, the perfection of masculinity. Jesus, who sacrifices himself out of love for his people. And this should be fatherhood. This should be priesthood. This should be each of us in our own responsibility. That just because you know, we, we have some more responsibility or less than, than, than others, all of us are called to serve. I remember hearing recently, it's not, not, not news to any of you, this is the kind of thing we hear on a regular basis, like that the church needs to, to get with the times. Ever heard that expression? Church needs to get with the times. Um, I can't say I agree in any way, shape or form, um, unless it's understood like the church needs to maybe uh, package its message, package its teaching a bit better. I think that we could probably improve on because people, the problem is never the teaching, the problem is how it's presented. The problem is, I mean, are we getting across the full picture of like God's mercy and God's justice, God's love and my call to obey? It's, it's always both. So, but it's never a case of the church getting with the times in the sense of adjust the church's teaching according to the tastes of people. No, that's, then that, that's not a church. If that was the case, then our teaching would just be human thought and we could change it according to the thought of the majority. It's only human thought, so we can adjust it. We can change it. If people don't like this teaching, okay, we'll, we'll change it so and we'll make it more palatable. And if they don't like what we've changed, then we'll, we'll change it again and, and it'll be great. And then everybody will be happy because the teachings will always suit our own tastes. And what do we end up doing? Disobeying God, for which there's no blessing. There won't be any blessing for, for doing something which is against God. So we don't have to get with the times. We have to get with the eternal one. We don't have to get with the times. We don't have to get with the, the next fad and fashion and, and, and next new idea that's going to renew the church. We have to get with the eternal one, who from all time plans this night. The, everything from, from creation, the fall, you've got your, 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 the, the flood, you've got the ark, you know, the, the ship, the, the ark which represents uh, the ship in, 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 in modern terms or New Testament terms. You've got the Moses and the, as we'll be hearing over the various readings now, especially during, during the vigil, uh, freeing the people from Egypt comparable or a foreshadowing of freeing us from the slavery of sin, parting the Red Sea, us going through baptism to enter into the promised land, to enter into new life, to enter into heaven. Like the, the, the symbolism is, just, is so, it's symbol on top. It's, it, it, it's so rich and so beautiful. So this is, we don't need to change any of this, <laughs> but maybe we need to repackage it and present it a bit better. But we don't need to get with the times. We need to get with the eternal one and then everything else will, will fall into place. So, the next part of this liturgy is, is the, the washing of the feet. And uh, th there have been a few occasions where, back in my own community uh, in Rome, uh, I've been one of the, the, the candidates to, to have their, their feet washed. Normally, a lot of our priests in the locality would gather uh, in our seminary in Rome, and so Father Paul will be celebrating the Mass. And I must say, I shared this with, with our community earlier today, that it's, when, when we try to see things, I suppose, maybe from the perspective of the apostles or from the perspective of Jesus himself, uh, this action takes on a whole new meaning because I remember I was, I was just sitting there like, and Father Paul was coming over to me and you know, taking, uh, taking this, like it, there, there's a, uh, there is a seriousness to it, like this is, this is a serious thing. It's part of the liturgy. And I, I felt just like Peter. I was like, do you know what, Father Paul? You, you could skip me, you know what I mean? You, you shouldn't be washing my feet. All right, this, this isn't right. This isn't right. I mean, I, mean, I owe my, my priestly vocation to you. I mean, you found me and guided me and everything. This, this isn't right. Okay, and so I mean, I completely identified with the impetuous uh, Saint Peter. And then Father Paul comes, and, and, and obviously I don't say anything. That would be kind of a, kind of ruin the liturgy, really, wouldn't? Uh, so I didn't do that. Uh, but I get it. I mean, I, I understand. I understand Saint Peter. But then the message, the teaching of the Lord rings rings true. You know, if I, your founder, the founder of of, of your community, if I have washed your feet. Wash your brother's feet and wash the feet of those entrusted to you. 
And so when you're in situations that make you frustrated or angry, never react in anger. When you're in situations where you feel uh, belittled or misunderstood, serve. Or you're in situations where you're tired, <laughs> serve. And do as Jesus did. And so I invite the, or we, have to, or we'll be mainly, we haven't actually got uh, 12 men uh, here tonight. So, uh, and yeah, there's, there's a, a lot going on with singing and technicians over here. So um, we have a representative number. And we remember the, the action of tonight and what it means that our Lord and Savior would kneel before you and wash your feet in order to teach you how to wash the feet of others. And so as we enter into this moment of the liturgy now, we do so with great humility, thinking of the great love that the Lord has for each one of us. <laughs>